Today I've got Andy Jamison from Switched On Media with us, and uh, welcome to uh, the video today. Thank you. Now, uh, Andy's uh, business, Switched On Media, actually is uh, a winner in the Deloitte's Technology Fast 500, or in the Top 500 ranking. He's also third in the Australia's Fastest Growing Smart Company Fast 50 Awards, and uh, actually came third in that. So, Andy, that's quite an achievement. So tell me about Switched On Media and how it started. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's always humbling to be honoured with things like that. Uh, Switch on Media started about five years ago with my business partner Scott uh, Ennis. We both met years ago at eBay uh, and through subsequent working at the client side, realised that we could uh, start an agency. So we started. So what made you start an agency? Do you think things were changing in the environment that you're in? I think it was, I think, uh, it was both timing. We saw that digital was, was taking off but still had opportunity to grow, so right. we were opportunistic in that regard. Right. Uh, but also we realised that we had value to add to people, and so it was both a growing market and a deep skill set and experience, and we wanted to capitalise on both of those. Right. So you believed you could bring something to the market a bit different to someone else? That's right. That's yeah. right. We dealt with a lot of, a lot of our uh, competitors now. We'd actually dealt with them when we were client-side. Right. So we had experience of what the offerings were and how people presented them. Right. And we thought we could do something a little bit different. Okay. Well, it sounds like you must have because you're being noticed in the marketplace, and that's, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, so, tell me a bit about how you started. Um, now, you call yourself a search, social, and digital agency. That's right. Okay, so these three areas actually may be at the forefront of all new digital marketing at the moment. So, tell me a little bit about, uh, I suppose, some of the elements of what you do work in, such as uh, one of them you've got on your website is uh, search engine optimization, or as people in the industry call it SEO. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us a bit about some of your activities in the SEO aspect of your business. We, we've been working in the search space for about 10 years now. So before Google had even set up here, we would, where I was working at eBay, we were doing deals with Google at the time. Right. So we've got deep, vast experience. That led us to realise that that channel was really growing. Uh, and the key challenge for people in search is uh, either you can pay to be there and that works and that's a great offering, gets you immediate traffic, or you can try and rank naturally. Uh, and that's incredibly valuable if you can rank naturally for words that a lot of people search for and they're highly related to your industry. Yep. Uh, that's incredibly valuable for our clients and that's something that we help them to, to achieve. Right. I've heard numbers like even in some small business categories that up to 90% of all buying decisions start with a Google search, especially in the IT space. Mm -hmm. The other numbers that really are fascinating is um, I've heard that Organic is very, very important because it's about 70%, 75% of all actual um, search results that people click on to go through to websites, whereas the pay is actually 25%. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably about the right split. Yeah. That's probably about the right split. And we see a huge uh, relationship between this search activity where people are looking uh, for more information, they're seeking something out. Uh, and, and the reason that people are seeking something out is probably because they've heard about something. And where do we hear about things today? Well, that's really the social space. So we see this, this loop forming between the two. Yep. When people hear about something in the social space, they often go and investigate that in the search space, which then drives them often, now when you look at the search results, back into the social environment. And so that loop kind of, yep. kind of goes round and round. Uh, and so we started in the SEO space, and we started there, and we were doing some social activity to help with our SEO results. We then realised that social is really starting to take off, and it built out an offering around. And that's probably the fastest area, growing area of our business at the moment. So social media for you is the fastest growing area? That's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, what's really fascinating is with uh, search, um, with Google and being in the other uh, big major players like Yahoo, is that they're integrating and indexing higher the results for social media platforms and search results in social media, aren't they? So. Mm. Uh, one of the other interesting things is Google's new Plus One button that's just been announced over the last uh, couple of weeks. It's been in beta for a while, but now they're actually running it. So that's going to be very interesting to uh, see what the results of that are over time. What, what do you think uh, the Plus One button is going to do for uh, search and social? I think Google's realised this relationships at play between, between search activity and people doing that and social activity. Yep. Uh, I think Plus One is, is their answer almost to the Facebook like button that's been out for a while and right. quite prolific and quite um, entrenched in the market. So they needed to do something. The question is, what were they going to do? Yep. They've come up with a plus one. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a good start. 
I think we'll end up with a few of these and all the key players will probably have their, their social piece that will uh, influence how, they, how people share things. Um, I think it's, when you think about search and the algorithms that are, that are made up behind that, the social um, value that can be derived by working out who, sh who is sharing that information and what information are they sharing and where's that from, you can now start to, to really work that out. If I've, if I've got one or two followers and I'm sharing something, then that's not as significant as someone with 5,000, 10,000, 50,000 followers. And also, what network is that person in? Google can really identify some of that information. So therefore, the, the value doesn't come down to just one share versus another share. It comes down to, to who's actually doing that. And all that information can be found. So my assumption is that that's being used quite heavily in the algorithm. And you do see that in the search results as well. Yeah. I've heard Google actually does up to uh, 500 algorithm changes a year. <coughs> So they're constantly tweaking the whole thing to keep their search relevant yep. uh, on an increasingly social web. Um, the other thing you actually do is PPC. So let's move on to PPC. Sure. Um, what do you do in PPC area? Pay per click for those who haven't heard of the term or ac acronym before. Yeah, pa paid search or PPC, pay per click marketing. For us, we operate in, in Google. So the ads that go along the top and, and down the right hand side. We also do that within Yahoo. Uh, there's also pay-per-click adverts within Facebook that we help to run for a lot of our clients. Uh, and beyond that now, there's more traditional traditional online media that you can buy on a, on a CPC model or a pay-per-click model. We're also starting to do some of that. Uh, the, what we do there is we, we try and look at uh, how we can be as robust and as deep and as broad and as, and as exhaustive as possible so that we match as many keywords uh, to what our clients have to offer, to what people are actually searching for. So if someone's searching for something, we want to get the right ad in front of them at the right time. Uh, and then we want to really measure that. And so we're quite uh, finicky in how we measure uh, to make sure that every dollar you spend, you know where you get back. And it comes down to what's the return and what's that payback period. And our kind of challenge uh, within the paid search environment is to, to maximise the return and to shorten the payback period. So if you put a dollar in, how quickly do you get $2 back? So you're very strong in ROI. Huge. Return on investment is very important to you. And I suppose your clients would be asking for that as well, saying, OK, we're going to invest $100,000 in you know, pay-per-click. Uh, are we going to get our money back? And typically how long? And sometimes it would be a hard question to answer in different industries, wouldn't it? It is a hard question to answer, but it's a really important one. If you, if you think about it, how does, a client want to, how does a client make a decision about where they're going to use their resource? Most clients have limited resource and they want to get an outcome and they want to achieve that outcome. So the question is, they've got lots of options. Uh, for us, the challenge is to make sure that the business cases that we help them to develop, help them to see the value that they will be able to extract. So the work we do, we always tie back to value. Um, <clears throat> when we can't do that, that's, that's a challenge that we've got to solve as the agency. Mm -hmm. We've got to help our clients to understand what the value is that they're getting out of the activity. Right. Uh, activity without being tied back to a business outcome, in my mind, is really short-sighted and, and limited in its longevity or the, the relationship I heard a number last year from a uh, friend of mine who's, uh, uh, his nephew was actually working in the traditional marketing area of uh, <coughs> Yellow Pages and he actually sold a $90,000 Yellow Pages full page ad and uh, wow. the marketing manager said I'm going to do it this year but I'll tell you what next year I'm going to come back to you and tell you uh, what the results are and then I'll decide whether I'll do it again. So 12 months later the results were in and he got two leads. Well, two pieces of business. Mm. So, very expensive lead generation platform. So, how do you see traditional and digital uh, interfacing uh, in the current marketplace? Yeah, I think there's definite friction there, that's for sure. Uh, clients um, and customers and businesses have, have increasingly, they've got lots of options that they can choose. <clears throat> they've still got all the traditional options. They've just got more, mm. um, more digital options that they can be So, it's to. more hard decisions to make. Well, I think it comes down to that value proposition, right? Yep. The, the customers now, instead of having a couple of options, might have double that, and so they've still got that limited resource. So where are they going to allocate that resource? How are yep. they going to make that decision? See, I'd look at <coughs> that Yellow Pages example, and I think that's those two leads, the question would be, who are those leads? They may, that may have been a great investment. Mm -hmm. It may have been, but it depends on who those leads are. That's right. So who did, did it bring a million dollars worth of business in? Or did, that's right. Yeah. It would have been a great decision, right? Yeah. My gut feel is that it probably 
maybe it wasn't, yep. but you know, that's my bias. Yep. Uh, but I think there's Good a sense point. in which it, yep. it, it could have been valuable. Um, so I think, I think it all comes down to value. It comes down to understanding that payback period, the investment, what does it take for you to reach an audience? How do you do that cost effectively? What's your offering that actually connects and resonates with it? So at the end of the day, it is the ROI, isn't it? So when the rubber hits the ground, what's the return on investment? Yeah. So it's, a, it's, the, it's the classic question we get from clients all the time. Yep. Can you show me the value of this? Show me the money. Yep. Right. We'll touch on the last area that uh, Switch on Media work in, and uh, it's the area of content. Now, I'm a big advocate of content, and uh, it seems like on my blog, for example, jeffwillis.com, I find that the better the content is, the more people turn up. Yes. And the more that come back. So how do you see the role of content in marketing in uh, your industry? I think it's hugely significant. Uh, content for us has been a growing area. Again, it came out of the SEO area. SEO, one of the challenges is you need good content to rank and you need it to be specific and focused. Um, we also then realised that, well, good content will actually lead to people sharing it, sharing it socially. Uh, and so we've realised out of both those things, and we still have that challenge, how do we rank well and we want content to rank well? Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to rank for particular terms, you need to be focused and you need to have that content, so it's essential there. You need it to be shared because if it's more popular, then the chance of ranking is greater as well. Uh, and more than that, you just need people to actually want to engage with your content. Why? Because the cost or the, the activity and the effort you go through to acquire someone, be that a visitor or a website, be that a new member or someone subscribing, whatever, is quite ex that's expensive, right? That's hard. So mm -hmm. when you've got that user, you want to make sure you're giving them something that, of value. that brings them back, something yeah. of value. Yeah. And something that they now want to share, because they want to share it, then your good content is actually growing your business. So for us, we've got a team of journalists downstairs, and all they do is produce good content for our clients. Uh, and our clients, our clients seem to like that. Content's always a challenge. Uh, it's one of those demanding things to do that takes time. Mm. And it's hard work. It's, it's hard work to do it well. You can't fake good content, can you? You can't fake good content, no. that's right. Yeah. Uh, and when you do content, you, you actually, where do people find content these days? Well, they find it through their Twitter streams or their Facebook yeah. page where people have shared it, or they search in Google for it and they find it. Mm. That's typically how we find content these days. So either on search or on social? That's right. Okay. So for us, content is, is paramount. Right. I would totally agree with you there. So, okay. My last question, which uh, is uh, maybe difficult, maybe not, uh, but I think you might know the answers. Uh, what's uh, switched on media's secret sauce? In other words, what makes you different and why uh, have you achieved uh, such success? Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a good question. It's one we think about a lot. There's a, there's a lot of competition in our space. Uh, there's a lot of people trying to do what we do. Now, we've grown very quickly over the last while, and I think there's a couple of key reasons for that. Um, one is, for us it's all about people. We hire the best people possible and we bring together the best team. That means we've sought out talent internationally. About half our team comes from overseas. Uh, we bring them out specifically, we target them, we find them, we identify them and we bring them out here to Australia. And we've got a great offering, right? Like, who doesn't want to come and live and work in Sydney? Sydney's great. Uh, so we've, so we've, we've got lots of people from America, lots of people from the UK, lots of people from Europe. The advantage of that leads us to actually what we do. So the people bit is the first bit. The second bit is what we do and how we do it. Uh, we're market leading in what we do because of our people. Our people uh, come from uh, markets where they're a little bit ahead of Australia. Mm -hmm. So we're able to bring some of that knowledge into the local market as well, help to advance what's going on here. Uh, our process and how we approach it is quite rigorous. We try and uh, separate ourselves um, so that we can provide independent and good advice to our clients. Um, and that, that means we the way we charge can often be different. Uh, so we might charge flat fees versus percentage of media, some of these things. We, we really want to understand what the client problem and challenge is and help them to solve it. Right. And the third thing, so people, process, the third one really is partnership. For us, it's, it's not about a short-term victory, a short-term campaign um, uh, approach. It's about long-term partnership with our clients. We want to understand what they're trying to achieve over the short, medium, longer term and then actually help them to get there. Uh, that's helped us when we start working with the clients in one or two of our areas of business. We actually end up growing that into other areas of business because we prove a result in a couple of areas. Uh, so for us, that long-term partnership uh, is really key. Right. So it's actually the three Ps. Um, 
People with process and partnership. The three P's of marketing, that's right. There you go. Yeah. Okay, you've heard it from Andy. Thanks very much, Andy, for Switched On Media for joining us today. And we look forward to maybe uh, speaking another time. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure. Okay, thank you. Cheers.